My name is Leanne Cave. I am a triathlete, um, but I did start um, young doing several different sports, including swimming, surf life saving, cross country running, cycling. Um, but I, I found triathlon was my, uh, my natural sport, the one I loved the most. Leanne Cave from Great Britain by way of Australia and the baby. When I was four, my parents decided to leave the UK for Australia, so we sold everything. From five to, I think, 15, I'd been to uh, 13 different primary schools, so we never really had any stability, and I struggled with that. I didn't have a lot of social skills, and I was a very shy kid, so I found myself getting bullied a lot. and never really making friends and when I actually started doing some sport I actually found that with the competition side it helped me with my confidence. I couldn't fit in in school but I could fit in in the sporting arena. Hello my name is Michael Diandara. I'm from Brazil. Uh, I'm a fiancé of uh, Leander Cave. Actually this was my idea, this crazy idea. Michael says to me you know, Leanna, wouldn't it be great if you um, won your fifth world title and did Ultraman? That means you'd have a world title in every distance. The Ultraman World Championship Triathlon is a three-day individual endurance event covering 320 miles. Each day takes roughly nine to ten hours of racing. Day one consists of an open water ocean swim followed by a 90-mile bike ride with a total of 7,000 feet of vertical climbs. Day two is a 170-mile bike ride with almost 8,000 feet of vertical climbs. And the third and final day is a double marathon which is 52 2.4 miles. April 2022, uh, Brad from Ultraman Canada emails me and he's like, Leander, um, are you still interested in doing Ultraman here in Canada? Race morning number one. So I go up to Canada. I had a pretty good race. I came second. Um, it was my first ever Ultraman. Um, and it was brutal. It was the, like one of the toughest things physically and mentally. After the race, I think we had two weeks um, to decide, are you going to do Worlds? And I was like, I don't know. I, I realized also that there's a huge cost involved. And so I was speaking with one client I train, uh, also a friend, uh, Craig Robbins, and he's like, well, how about um, I get my company to sponsor you? In that conversation, we also decided that um, I would do it for charity to raise money for um, cancer research for Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center in Miami. I'll put my crew together. So we have uh, Michael Indara, Jenny Fletcher, and Sue Fraser. It was honestly no surprise to me that she ventured into Ultraman, although to me it's utterly inconceivable to think that people can complete that distances. She's an absolutely incredible athlete um, with, with no weakness across all three disciplines and at any distance. She was one I used to love and hate at the same time to race against because she's really, really tough. The Ultraman is over three days. It's uh, not something I think I would want to want to compete in. Um, you know, it is swim, bike, and run, so it is in our wheelhouse. But racing over three days, that's a whole different set of logistics and nutrition and recovery and um, a whole lot of things that could go wrong in one day. I don't want to go in day, into day three being any more than fifty minutes behind because I think I could run an hour quicker than her. I know my competition, like Tara Norton and Didi Grishbauer, um, I know where their strengths and weaknesses are. My plan is to race, to push myself to the point where I know I can handle it and not break down, um, but also try to stay within certain a certain time, um, like deficit of her. If I had like a 50 minute, um, deficit on Didi, I could probably make that up and, and beat her. My expectations are pretty high that way. So I feel like now um, I'm, I'm excited and, and nervous, but also very confident about the form I'm coming into this race with. Also, yeah, I want to win a fifth world title. I'm not here in, for 
any other reason than to give that a good shot and um, that's why I've really just committed to this event and trained really hard for this event and um, I'm going to try tooth and nail to do that <laughs> on race day. First day is um, not the hardest, so um, today's just getting through and having a, a very strong, um, solid day. And, and the first bike, it's only 90 miles, so it's not like going to kill me. Goal today is to not have uh, too much of a deficit um, behind um, Didi, who I know will probably swim um, faster than me and possibly bike stronger than me. So. I want to stay within um, 20 to 30 minutes of her uh, finish time today. I think today is going to be a good day. Oh no. How are you feeling? Good. The swim was very um, good, I thought, when I was out there, and then it got really choppy. Can you see the next, the leader? Yeah, there's five people. One, two, three, four, five, and then us. It became really tough at around eight kilometers when I actually looked at the bottom and I saw myself swimming on the spot. <laughs> and I think the next Two kilometers took about an hour. <laughs> I was all over the place with the transition out of the swim. First of all, it's like you got sea legs, so I'm like falling all over the place. So I felt very um, disorientated. And um, then I, you know, got on my bike. Oh man, you were very protective. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and she came out of the, the swim. She probably didn't do the first right turn. She might have went straight. So, like, we haven't seen her, so she went straight. She, 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 yeah, she must have went straight. But we don't know where she is unless she's in front of Davey, and Davey had a bike mechanical. Well, that could be. Well, but, here's a bike. Oh, wait, we see a bike right now with a light. Yeah, it's her. Yeah, it is her. Oh, my God, Got it, I got it. Yeah, yeah that. Yeah, She was about seven minutes down into the swim, and now she's probably lost I mean, probably a 45 minute buffer on her instead of a seven minute buffer. You know, not unobtainable, but mentally, I don't know how you do it. Um, I get to the first intersection, which is roughly, what, like maybe just under a mile. Um, uphill and um, and I'm looking for the sign to turn right but there was no sign and I was like I'm pretty sure we meant to turn right here but they said in the briefing the day before that don't turn right unless you see a sign we're gonna have signs at every intersection and there's no sign so I'm like huh maybe I read that wrong I'll go straight the one thing athletes expect when they come to event is to stay on course um, when you've trained for months and spent a lot of money to be somewhere you expect that and I think as a race professional that's an obligation you take on that scenario should never be there because a there should be a volunteer there should be a sign and there should be something on the road so that worst case scenario if a sign blows down a volunteer goes for a, a washroom break you still have an arrow and that arrow should be a consistent arrow through the whole course you know it's for that event it's not for some other event that's there got like four miles up the road before my crew found me and told me I was off course. I'm a little pissed at myself that I just didn't like do what I felt was right. Um, and also disappointed with, with the race organizers. Um, this is a world championship after that. I, I didn't quit, I, I still fought my whole way, but an extra eight miles of climbing 
in my legs didn't really um, help. A little bit tired. A little bit frustrated. So, yeah, I finished today not, not really happy, to be honest. And I'm not the only one who went the wrong way. And honestly, if I was, I'd be like, well, Neander, you're an idiot. Maybe three athletes who have also gone the wrong way. She has a mental of champion, you know. She right away, like, turn around and keep going. You know what, this is a three-day event, and I can't make this, I can't let this defeat me. And that was with also inside nine hours. Unfortunately, it may not have been a marker. She went uh, straight up the big climb up here. Therefore, unfortunately, lost a lot of ground and time as a result of doing so. Do you want to know how far behind you are? Or would you prefer not to? No, tell me. You want to know? Yeah. Hour and a half. Hour and a half. She smashed the record. Hour and 32, actually. The white course. I think it's 132. Wow. Good to her. Yeah, yeah, she smashed it, yeah. so, yeah. Can she sustain that tomorrow? We'll see. 470 miles. That's a long time. It's so far. It's so far. <laughs> it's a really far. turn that she right away, and we have, um, she missed it, so we couldn't find her when we were going up this long. Try not to kill anyone. Next is I was pretty beat after the first day, surprisingly more than I thought. Um, and I just, again, I couldn't get into, into my groove. Thanks, team. You need anything in here? She's all good. No, she's good. She's still having like a lot of girl. Uh, This course. Um, way tougher than I imagined. I don't think there was any flat stretch the whole way. It was up or down and there was no time I could just like dial in a gear and get in the TT and just like kind of go in diesel mode. I was digging deep in every way and um, I finally like just had to surrender to the to the course. Uh, I didn't feel really safe cycling um, because I actually saw one guy who had an accident, the ambulances were already on the scene treating him and then not even like maybe five minutes later um, I was behind somebody and a car just pretty much cut him off uh, without any turn signal or nothing he just turned right in front of him this is definitely a crash and race. I said, if somebody doesn't get killed out here, it's a miracle. I didn't get this far to be um, in an accident and not finish. So I think finishing was like the key to just being uh, in contention. Um, but then by the end of <laughs> day two, boy, I think in the last hour, I, I had to go to some dark places just to get to the finish line. It was like, it was never gonna end. I'm honest and as tired as I was I was still um, able to you know kind of finish kind of strong even though I spent probably the last 15-20 uh, minutes groveling and crying and I think I was just mentally and physically like exhausted and it just was taking its toll on me emotionally. <laughs> She finished the second day, she was crying, you know, and when I saw that, it really hurt me, you know, like I was, I was like in pain, I felt her pain, you know, she went to a dark place in the bike. I was so, and in so much pain and um, I think I emptied every tank that I had, like the K2 
calorie tanks, the emotional tank, um, the fitness tank, every, everything was empty. Today, I realized I'm not racing to win anymore. Um, I'm not even sure I was ever racing to win now. I feel like maybe my expectations were, were too high coming into this. I can't be happier that, to not jump on a bike tomorrow and put my running shoes on. <laughs> First place way off in the distance. Second place she's off to. And so there was actually the third place up for grabs. I just had to like continue on like a steady, steady uh, path on the run. Like just not, not give up essentially. I ran about 14 miles first with her and we had so much fun. We we're just talking. I mean, the whole idea of having me beside her is to make sure she's getting her nutrition. And the second thing was to just distract her. And so we would just talk and we'd talk about stories and we were just, it gave us like, hours of time to catch up and eventually you know we stop talking and the stories get fewer because it's tough out there. I needed all the mental and physical energy I could. I was already hurting physically. My legs were already um, totally locked up at uh, 10 miles to go and then that little downhill before the finish it was just so painful. And this is going to be another Race to the line, it's going to be an 833.55 crossing for there. Endurance right for a female athlete of you in 2008. The most of the top personality of the year in the world. And she had a point there as well. She uh, does a lot of coaching. She's been to Commonwealth Games, actually represented Wales there as well, because I believe at a thrilling uh, time we were so pleased to see her then you, when you look at her wins she knew what she went to to make it to that finish line i've never seen her push to this level and to like cry at the end makes me teary because she's done a million races and never had to suffer as much as she did in this one it's so hard the hardest thing i've ever done in my life the toughest race um and I never imagined it would be this tough. Now performance. I'm proud because, and it's, I'm proud of my whole crew and um, what we've accomplished. I'm really proud of her. Like really, really, really proud of my girl. <laughs> In the end, third was what I managed to achieve. Not by a lot when you consider, you know, I've been racing for like 26 hours in total. Um, so third place by, I think, 12 minutes or something in the end. I couldn't have done it without him, that's for sure. Good, Good job, Tim. <laughs> now let's eat burgers and fries and shakes. No, oh, no, oh, that's my time. Oh, my time. Is it allowed to say Draki here? Because I don't know. Right? <laughs> we need to celebrate. I'm actually a little uncomfortable to say. My name is Dee Dee Griesbauer, and I'm finally a world champion. Yay! At the end, this was um, a race I did for cancer research, for charity, to raise money. And any suffering that I have for such a small period of time is like really nothing compared to like cancer patients. I, I'm very, very proud of myself for getting through this, not once but twice in one year. Uh, I don't think I, I have any unfinished business here. Are you ever going to do this event? No, I'm done. Um, what Michael said on the camera? What did you say? He said that he wants to do this event next year. <laughs> Such a liar, never. No, you made me do it. Now I'm gonna See make you your do pain it. just yeah, yeah, uh, you gave it. Well, I did a good test. <laughs> <laughs>